Good evening, everyone. Hello, hello. It's 5.30 p.m. today here in Melbourne. And uh, make sure that everyone who's joining us tonight, introduce yourself in the comments. And uh, let me know also where you're joining me tonight, because uh, as you know, I'm still in Melbourne, still in isolation. And um, Dan is actually in Queensland. We all hate him at the moment. <laughs> but please comment below. Um, please introduce yourself and comment where you're joining us tonight. So I know isolation is everyone is over it. But as I always say, the good thing about isolation, it's a good time to learn something new. And, you know, with um, so many conversations happening online today with all this uh, rise of uh, content marketing, Tonight, we're actually going to talk about the power of structure for content creation. And um, I'm sure you can relate to it. How many times you, you know, wake up on Monday morning and felt like, oh, I should post something on LinkedIn because I haven't posted anything for last week. And then the week go past and you wake up next Monday morning like, oh, my God, I haven't posted anything on LinkedIn. <laughs> I should post something. And then it feels like just this dragging thing about I need to create something, but I don't know where to start. And you don't feel creative anymore. And you don't feel like creating it at all. So anyway, tonight um, we're going to talk with Dan and he's going to share with us how important the structure when it comes to content creation and how we can actually stay creative when we create our content because Dan create a lot of content in his life so we're gonna definitely pick his brain tonight so uh, before i'm gonna pass uh, to Dan to introduce himself i just want to remind you that we are going live tonight on youtube linkedin and facebook so on all three, three platforms. And you can ask us uh, question, as many questions as you want on all three platforms. And we will be trying to reply to all your questions. But please stay on the topic because today we're talking about the structure for content creation. And uh, I'm just going to pass it to Dan to introduce himself. Thanks, Jana. Well, uh, guys, thank you for joining us on this little live that we're going to do for you. Um, so a bit about my background. I have been in the television industry since 1994, 26 years. And in that time, I've produced a lot of different content. But more recently, in the last 11 years since running my business, um, you know, content creation has been a part of this whole social media thing. And I think probably around 2015, 2016, I started getting really into Gary V and literally took everything he said verbatim. So I went out and I created a web series about me. And at the time I was traveling around Asia doing events for Sony at YouTube. And I had someone, I hired someone and we, we traveled around Asia and she filmed me and we made these four minute videos. So I really took what Gary V said to heart and went, you know, he said, you've got to go out and document your life. So off I went and documented my life, probably spent about 70 or $80,000 doing that. And uh, nothing, literally nothing got nothing back from it. I mean, look, uh, clients tell me now, oh, I love that series. So I think the thing is that oftentimes you, you think something's failed, but in actual fact, what you don't know is how many people have been, been consuming your content quietly. Uh, yeah, and that's actually a quite an interesting point about quietly consuming content. Uh, because, you know, like at the moment we have Imtiaz here, Imtiaz saying hi, and Cheryl's here. Uh, but uh, there will be a lot of people also who would never comment and would never say hi in the comments or just will be quietly listening and maybe listening to me for quite a few weeks now, but just, uh, you know, never, uh, never ask the question. And, and that's okay. But surprisingly, uh, then you meet these people in the real life and they're like, oh, Dan, I've been watching your videos about your life and I'm loving them. And you're like, oh, who are you? I've, you never you never approached me before. Have you, have you experienced that quite often? 100%. In fact, I've got a great story about a really good client of mine, been with me over a year now in my mastermind. 
And he was an email subscriber from 2009. He bought a DVD from us in 2009. In 2014, he bought my book, Business for Filmmakers, and then nothing until 2019 when he joined my mastermind program and has been a, a monthly subscriber to that ever since. So, you know, emails are content, video is content, audio is content. You, you've been on my podcast a few times. This is content. So, I, I to your point, absolutely. Uh, people quietly consume and rather voyeuristically watch you from afar and then you meet them and they're like oh yeah i've been watching your stuff for years so i guess the the philosophy around content creation is don't go into it expecting anyone to tell you they're watching you can oftentimes be making content and you really don't know how many people are really consuming it but it's the consistency of the content creation that builds your authority and helps you build trust and authenticity in your market. And uh, definitely, I want to probably stress again about the trust because we all know that trust builds over time. There is no shortcut for building trust. Um, you know, sometimes you trust the person only because you know them for the long time. You might not even been like in, in touch and don't even know what the person exactly doing, but you already feel more trust if you need to even refer some business to them only because you know them longer than, than another person. So that's why it's the uh, same principle with the content creation. Uh, if you've been sending those emails from 2009 and someone consistently been receiving these emails, they trust that you are reliable that you actually want to uh, know what you're doing with your business because you've been showing up for 10 years. Yeah, exactly right. And the other thing is, is, is people aren't necessarily ready to buy from you right now, but no only means not now. And if I had decided that, oh, I don't think anyone's reading these emails, my open rates are low, my click through rates are low. What's the point? But instead, I just kept sending the emails. So I built a very consistent message over a long period of time. And when this particular client was ready, he was like, I'm now ready. And he's like, he's, he's an amazing client. So I could easily have stopped producing the content. But, you know, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Simon, I remember him telling me, he said, oh, I, I loved your Be Real series. And when I first met you, I felt like I knew you because I'd seen you on the Be Real series. And the other thing about doing that web series was interesting was I was just going about my work. I was speaking at these events. But for someone who doesn't know you or doesn't know me, when they see that, it sort of it helps with, with, with the positioning. It helps with authority. Um, I then went on to make 100 videos on tips. I did 100 one-minute videos. Um, that I made and we'd record like five a week and my VA would edit them and put subtitles and the headlines. And then we ran them every single day for a hundred days. And then we repeated them every single day for a hundred days. So we did 200 days of video content creation. And again, I'm like, oh, I don't think I've done very much, but you know, I think it was um, Shaquille or one of the really famous basketball players said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So by that, I think it's, it's, it's worth kind of acknowledging that you may as well put some content out because if you don't put content out, you're guaranteeing no result. If you put 100 pieces of content out, you'll get something. And, and you never really know I always think of of winning new clients as a kind of a layering exercise. You know, when someone comes to you for the first time, they don't know who you are. They don't even know if they've got a problem that you can solve, but they become aware of you. And the next time they see you, they go, oh, there's that, there's that Yana again. I've seen her around a few times. And, uh, oh, she does something about video. Or maybe actually she could help me. So I think the more, it's called the mere exposure effect. And the mere exposure yep. effect is simply the more times you come into contact with a person, product, brand, or service, the more likely you are to build trust. And I think they, they currently say that it takes between 15 and 18 points of contact with a brand or a product or a service provider until 
a, a prospect feels comfortable reaching out and having a sales conversation. So if you're pushing out content once a week on social, then in 12 weeks time, you've kind of, you've kind of built some of that journey. If you did two pieces of content a week, then you're at 24. So you can actually, you can, you can accelerate the time it takes for someone to trust you by having content out on, on LinkedIn. Maybe you've got content out on, on Facebook, but like what you're doing today, you're streaming this through StreamYard to LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook simultaneously. And so they're like TV channels. There's a different audience on Facebook. There's a different audience on YouTube and a different audience again on LinkedIn. But that's three points of contact potentially with, with an audience. So um, it, it just it just pays to make content and not think too hard about it. Just put something out. Uh, I really like that you mentioned me exposure. I actually uh, quite often talk about me exposure in a different content because um, it's... Uh, um, it's just everywhere in our life because as more we're familiar with something, as more we like it. It's actually, uh, you remind me, it was a really interesting experience where a research assistant was attending uh, lectures at the university and um, they wouldn't talk with students, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't interact with them. They would just come to the lecture and they just sit at the back. And uh, then at the end of this course, student was asked to, uh, evaluate these research assistants by attractiveness. And surprise, surprise, the ones who came the, um, to the lecture the most, the ones who attended like 50 lectures, compared to the ones who attended only five lectures, was uh, rated as more attractive. So it's wow. not only, <laughs> it's uh, me exposure, we're actually more attracted to things we're familiar with. That's why, um, I always talk say about things like that's why I don't talk Vegemite, don't don't like Vegemite, <laughs> because I didn't grow up with Vegemite, and uh, we can relate a lot to the, to those things. Something that we've been exposed a lot in the childhood, we are usually more familiar and we trust it more. So again, me exposure, it's a uh, you know around us everywhere, and uh, when it comes to the content creation works 100% because as more you see someone, as more you're familiar with something, as more you like them, as simple as it sounds. And yeah. uh, I actually want to ask uh, people who are listening to us, uh, what's, what's your biggest challenge when it comes to uh, creating content? Because, you know, it's great to say, like, yeah, let's create content. Let's just pop up 100 videos out there and see what, <laughs> what will happen. But what's, what's your biggest challenge? How do you feel about, um, you know, content creation? So put, put in the comments and we'll just um, continue our conversation because I want to ask you then, uh, you know, I even have a little slide here. What's, what's the difference um, between being creative and spontaneous? Because often we hear that uh, when we're spontaneous, we're more creative. But today, the topic that we pick is actually structure of content creation. So where is this creativity and, you know, so where is this um, structure fits when we talk about creativity? Well, that's a great, a great place to start, Jana, because, you know, I've been very fortunate. I've filmed in over 50 countries. I've filmed thousands of different projects. And... You know, right at the beginning, you think that being creative is being spontaneous, just showing up and wistfully going, let's just make some content, see how we feel. And that doesn't work in the professional world. It doesn't really work in any world. You need structure, you need discipline, and you need to figure out what you're going to say and, and who you're going to say it to and how that's going to look. And and so I, I, I recommend that creating some form of structure around your content will actually make you more creative. You know, if we didn't have a conversation prior to this call and, 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 and messages over the last month, I would have rocked up and I could have talked about any subject and rambled on for half an hour. But we actually have a structure to the things we're going to talk about that we feel will be of value to the audience that stick very closely to the title of the power of structured content creation. So without structure, things get out of control and you lose you lose the confidence of your audience because they're like oh this is going off on a tangent now whereas structured 
in your content approach with the kind of content you're going to talk about and also how you're going to deliver it is really important. So we, let's take delivering content. This is a 30 minute live. It's not a 45 minute live or a 60, 60 minute live. It's 30 minutes. So what we promised the audience is 30 minutes of value. So to make that really valuable, we split it up into a number of sections. So we hit certain topics throughout the, throughout the program. Now, my, my hope is, and because you're really good at this, is that that will, that will feel like a seamless presentation. But Jana's been working on this for probably six weeks. We've had multiple email conversations. I was, I was really, really busy, so didn't have much time to kind of really commit to it. So Jana asked me to give her some information. She's created the whole presentation, and now we're giving you this, this value. So I want you to think about your audience. Who are you talking to? And what is their what is their constraint if they're time poor can you deliver your message in 30 seconds or in a text post or in an image it doesn't necessarily have to be a video or could it work as a live so these are the questions you have to ask yourself and i think that's the first tip that uh, you have here be specific in who you're talking to because i think it's obvious that being creative will be different depends on your audience. For some people, um, something will feel creative and interesting, but for some people it will feel boring. So boring and creative are quite subjective, depends on your audience. And um, I always um, you know, bring, um, bring this example uh, as, you know, when you're starting out photographer and you take a picture out of focus, that's a picture out of focus. But when you're a famous photographer and you take the picture out of focus, it's an art. So right. So you're absolutely right. Someone, it's objective. Yeah. And, if and, and what I would for a while, you have this chance to to push your creativity more. But you need to find your audience first. So there's a very a very common um, you know phrase in marketing. If you try and talk to everyone, you'll end up talking to no one. And so. You have to be very clear about who your audience is. Are they male? Are they female? What age are they? You know, a, a, a great one that I often hear with, with filmmakers I work with is I ask them the question, so who do, who do you want to pitch? Who's your audience? And they say, oh, well, we can work with anybody and we can do anything. And I'm like, no, no, no. Who do you want to work with? Okay, uh, medium to large size businesses. Well, that's still very, very broad. But if someone comes to me and says, I want to specialize in working in healthcare and specifically medical device companies, they can go very deep in one niche. Now, there are probably several hundred thousand medical device companies on the planet. So if you become the absolute expert in talking about medical device um, companies, you could have more work than you'd ever need. And you would be the famous, if you like, artist who specializes in that space. And so when you're making your content, if I was working for a medical device company as, as a filmmaker, I would be bringing content to them that talks about compliance or communicating complex medical concepts to a layperson, or I'd be talking about research that was being done in the medical space. So what, what the, the, the idea around niching down on your audience is that you can go very deep at um, explaining lots of different areas around that topic, and you can become a really valuable um, asset in someone's feed if you're specializing in that. So, for example, Jana, I know you specialize in training people on how to come across better on video. So you run a live video show every Wednesday. That is a great way to bring your audience into your world because you're you're teaching the very thing that you're selling, which is you give away this enormous amount of value on your live streams, which takes an enormous amount of time to book guests, chase annoying guests like me who are too busy to respond to your emails, get us to turn up, make the slides for us. But what you're doing is you're demonstrating the power of video and you're exposing that audience to, to what it is you do. So I think that's really smart. So you've got a really great handle on, on that notion. And I probably want to also add uh, that when you really specific your audience and you can really narrow it down, then it's easier to be creative as well. Because then you deeper, have a deeper understanding in the subject as well. 
then you can really put all these like creative components together. And I have a have a picture here <laughs> about reinventing the wheel. So content content creation, it's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about understanding uh, what your audience want and how you can show it maybe from the different side. But it doesn't mean that you will do something that completely non-functional like this uh, beautiful bicycle here. I agree. And I think the other thing is, is don't don't feel like you've got to get overly ambitious with your content. I'm talking about web series that I did and videos that I made. But actually, one of the most effective pieces of content I've ever made was when I talked about my battles with fitness and weight and, and health. And I decided to get back on my bike after not being on my bike for a year. And I, I was struggling to ride like five to 10 Ks. And I was out of breath and I felt really unfit. And I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to do this. And then within three months, I was riding 50 Ks before breakfast. And one day I took a sweaty picture of myself. I actually know it was, it was of the, it was of the speedometer on my computer that said, you've just done 50 kilometers before 7.30 in the morning. And I, and I wrote a piece about how I'd been able to overcome adversity and, and nailed this. And that post had so much engagement and so many comments. And I think what, what my advice would be is be authentic. Don't try and be something or someone you're not or create content that you think your audience want to see. You know, people are humans. Human to human is a far more effective story than anything else. And I think when you show a little bit of vulnerability, people really respond well to it. And uh, yeah, so don't overcomplicate your content. I think you have a great example here. You said before you spent like 80 grand filming all these videos around Asia, uh, you know, producing, editing and so on. And then uh, something as simple as uh, telling the story about you riding your bike in the morning for 50 kilometers actually get more engagement that uh, highly produced uh, series of videos around Asia. So yeah. I think we definitely, uh, and I can relate to it uh, myself, like overcomplicate, overcomplicating content. Um, it's, it's often not about, again, coming up with like reinventing the wheel, reinventing the wheel. It's about understanding your audience. And I think um, Imtia is actually asking us, are you going to touch on content strategy and how to plan it effectively? So I guess, uh, what we what we already uh, touching on here that obviously you need to start with your audience. Uh, we can repeat it over and over again. You need to make sure you understand your audience instead of reinventing the wheel. And then you need to be consistent because yeah. uh, as we established, we wanna we wanna um, build this trust and familiarity with our audience. Absolutely. And, and I have I have tested enormous amounts of things in marketing over the years. And I, I've tested five days a week posting. I've tested three days a week posting, two days a week posting, times of the day. And, and here's the thing. You can never produce too much content. It can only be boring. So it, nothing can ever be too long. It can only be too boring. Uh, now I post once per week. I have a podcast that I post every Thursday or Friday. I'm not even that cons consistent with it, but I always post the same content, which is here's this week's episode. And I've seen posts that have gotten a lot of engagement and posts that don't get very much engagement and neither has had a dramatic impact on my sales or my, my inquiries. So I, I now look to be efficient, which is I want to produce content efficiently so i push one piece of content out every week usually on a thursday or a friday and and that's it so i'm putting 52 pieces of content out a year on linkedin and 52 pieces of content a year out on facebook and i send 52 emails a year guaranteed to my email list now sometimes i'll send more than one email a week but generally speaking what i do is i create valuable content for my email list every single week and then every 15 to 20 pieces of content, I'll make an offer of a sale or an inquiry to come and join our program. So I like to kind of give it sort of a ratio of 15 to one, 15 pieces of value to one request for a sale. 
And again, depending on the platform you're on, I think that can be that can be that can change. If you're on LinkedIn, for example, then it's very easy for people to find you. So if you're delivering value, they can message you. Same with same with Facebook. If you're on Facebook giving value and your audience wants to get a hold of you, they can send you a message. YouTube slightly different. They can leave a comment, but it's never really very hard for anyone to find you. If you've delivered value to someone, you don't need to rattle off how to contact you. They've got your name. Anyone can Google your name or my name and find us. And so I think what I'd say with content is don't pitch in your content. Deliver value and highlight that you can be of value because you're human and that you understand what that means to be human. And and I think that will be far more valuable than coming up with a massive strategy. But what I would say to your to your question about strategy is, is just have a plan for the next four weeks. Um, M M Mtiaz, I think your name is, Mtiaz, sorry. Um, have a plan for the next four weeks and say, okay, next week I'm gonna post a, a written post with a photograph. Maybe you've got a video that's relevant to your audience. The, and, and a really easy way to post content is to post thought leadership. So find a great article that's relevant. Let's say we're talking about medical device companies. Get some Google alerts happening for that. And if something significant happens in the medical device world, Post a, post a comment and say, hey, just noticed that this company over here released this new product. That seems like a game changer. What do you think? Link to it. That is providing value to your audience. And if someone in your audience who's in the medical device space sees that and hasn't been aware of it, they're going to remember it came from you. And all you're doing is saying, hey, I thought this would be interesting. I'd probably just add a little bit uh, to this tip if you're on LinkedIn and LinkedIn doesn't like that you're sharing uh, external content, screenshot it. Do the screenshot of this article and post it as a picture and put the link in the comments. So in this case, uh, LinkedIn think that you're putting the original content because you're posting the picture. Uh, but you're actually sharing, you know, someone's article. But I only suggest, and you don't know where to start with your content strategy, start with your uh, clients' uh, uh, frequently asked questions. If you already have uh, frequently asked questions on your, um, on your website, that's, you know, something that you can uh, just open up, just put a bit of a story than you replying to, replying to these questions. And that could be a really easy place to start creating content. And I guess um, regarding the content strategy, and I'm sure then you can relate it, uh, relate to me because you just give us example. You, it's really hard to nail it at the first go. So you have to produce some content before you actually start getting results. I don't think I met anyone who started producing content and nailed it straight away. 100%. Like, you know, in marketing, we say don't think, test. And so you have to go into any content strategy with no expectation and just go in with a, a scientific approach, a data driven approach. Go in and go, I'm going to throw lots of different content into the market and see what sticks, see which content resonates the most with my audience. And the great thing about content creation, we'll, t we'll use you know, Facebook or, or LinkedIn as an example, or indeed YouTube, is that if no one likes your content, it will disappear faster than a bath draining out of a plug hole. You know, it's, it's not gonna stick around. So don't worry if your content's not good or not received very well, because, if you take the approach from a marketing perspective, which is a data-driven analytical approach of, okay, well, I now know what doesn't work, and you, through a process of elimination, you come up with what does. Like I said, I mean, if you want to go over to my YouTube channel and just Google my name and find the YouTube channel, you'll find the web series. And, you know, it, it's I think it's pretty interesting, pretty entertaining, but it wasn't as effective as just writing a post about cycling 50Ks before breakfast on, on LinkedIn. So, um, you know, just test until you find the results that work for you. And there isn't a set formula. You know, my content will resonate differently to my audience and perhaps your content will resonate with yours. So yeah, just um, just just try it. 
Uh, and I can relate it um, a lot. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I'm nail it. I'm just going to produce, you know, this uh, series of tips of something. And I'm so proud of myself and I'm so excited about it. And I think this one definitely will get a lot of engagement and cricket. And sometimes yeah. you... <laughs> And sometimes uh, something comes to you maybe last minute, it happens, and uh, you, you get results. So you need to have a strategy to start with, but you need to make sure you obviously test and change your strategy as you go. But um, I, I, it's probably the same than, uh, you know, we're talking about content creation photography today as well. I definitely say... Um, because I've been doing so much modeling. If I'm uh, if we're playing some shoot and photographers will tell me, oh, yeah, no, let's just create something. Let's just, you know, get together and, and create some, do something creative. And I must tell you, it doesn't work that well. <laughs> so even if uh, sometimes you get a good picture, you know, sometimes spontaneously you might get a, you know, random great picture, but usually... When you make way more like planning and you have a bit few ideas what you want to create, you will push it further. You have your starting point, you start to create, and then you create something even more creative because you already planned something before. So I definitely say the structure works for creativity 100%. You get a better result if you pre-plan something instead of just like, yeah, let's just shoot something and come up with something creative. 100% every time. The, the structure and discipline around planning will set you free to be more creative. And uh, MTS is asking you, how do you deal with analysis paralysis when posting content? Um, I just don't think too much about it, MTS. I just, I just post different types of content. So I, over a period of time, I've tested lots of different kinds of content. But over the course of a month, I would track um, what that content would look like. And I'd look at the, the, you know, the engagement. I'd look at the comments. And I'd be like, well, you know, sometimes things poke out and sometimes they don't. I, my, my only real measure is am I receiving more inquiries from my product and service by, as a result of making this content or, or as a result of not making this content? Uh, so I tend not to analyze too much. I would do like a month of testing and see which content gets the most most engagement and just do more of that. I wouldn't focus too much on trying to figure it out. Just like what's getting, you know, 80-20, like what's getting the most views? Let's do more of that. And you could simply test a video, a text post, and a text with image post and see which one gets the most engagement. And a, and a simple test like that go with the one that gets the most engagement and also think about your strengths you know obviously then you you've been working in cinematography that's why you're posting a lot of videos but uh you know you, if someone you know if you guys good in writing uh do do written post it doesn't mean you know that you have to produce a particular you know particular type of content for example i like talking so <laughs> i do live streams so that's the easiest way for me to produce content. Um, and I found live streams a great way to produce the content because there is so much, um, so, so much different ways to repurpose it as well. Because if I, if I produce the uh, live stream like this, which is already like, we're already 33 minutes here, uh, it's already a long piece of content that can sit on LinkedIn, but then you can um, crop this video into little videos with uh, little tips that then give us and you have i don't know 10 different posts for your linkedin or facebook for example then you can extract audio files from this interview and here's your podcast or you can just simply um screenshot some some bits of this video you have a third of the day and you can uh, you know put a screenshot and um, say something about the structure for content creation so Repurposing content is really important when it comes to strategy because otherwise everything you will be doing just full time producing content nonstop. So remember about how powerful repurposing can be because um, if you said something once, it doesn't mean that 
your audience will hear it. And even the audience heard it, it doesn't mean they will remember that they heard it. So we only remember about, even from the stream, you guys probably will remember only 20% of information we talk about anyway. So don't be scared of uh, content repurposing. So uh, your audience need to hear something few times, so it's really stick to their mind. Absolutely. Uh, just don't don't overanalyze. Find content that works for you, and more importantly, works for your audience. And and just be of service, be of value. If you know your market, if you know your audience, you know what their pain points are. You know the kind of struggles they're going through. You know that it's relevant to their market. Talk about that. And don't overthink. <laughs> Overthinking. Overthinking kills creativity. Not the structure kills creativity. Overthinking kills creativity because you just, uh, oh, maybe I should uh, post about this, or maybe I should post about that. Just pick one topic. Pick pick one topic for next ninety days and just stick to it and test it. And you will be surprised how you will get new ideas while you posting, because people will comment, people will ask you questions. Your audience is actually uh, point you in the right direction once you start posting. So, getting back to you, MTS, testing is essential. Yes. <laughs> you can't just come up with the great strategy just like that and think that it's going to work straight away. Uh, it would be great. Maybe I haven't met one person yet, but maybe there is a few people there out there like that. Not sure. Have you met anyone then? No, I, I think I think you know what we do, used to do in filmmaking is like you make it look spontaneous, but it's actually all figured out and planned out. Uh, the reason that structure and discipline sets you free is because you put a framework around what you're going to talk about, and then the creativity happens within that framework. So it keeps keeps everything on point. You know, I actually even been in uh, uh, a few reality shows, and you think that reality show is, uh, you know, a reality show, they just go and film you. Usually it's all planned. So every time, you know, that's every time I watch, TV, like, I don't have a TV, by the way, but uh, if I see something, uh, some show on TV, I always kind of think, like, oh, they planned that. And that's why she come out from here. And that's why she said this. And uh, it, it's funny how sometimes you think that it's something that's been um, so spontaneous, but it's actually been really, really um, precisely planned. Well, in, in television circles, it's actually called scripted reality. So go figure. <laughs> scripted reality. Here we go, guys. Um, so... Um, we are uh, going to to wrap, um, wrap the things. So, uh, wrap the things. Where is it? <laughs> I'm not really doing that well. <laughs> We're wrapping the things. So, guys, um, last questions to Dan. Um, we're already coming to the 40 minutes mark. So, Imti is saying, great tips, love the simplicity and um, how you're answering questions. Totally agree with what we're thinking. Yep, yeah, I'm sure everyone on the same board, especially with um, isolation. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking. It makes it boring, Sam. Um, probably when I was talking about testing, <laughs> testing makes it boring. <laughs> Let us know what what makes it boring, Sam. If you still still here with us, uh, because I probably missed the moment that you put this comment on. So then, okay, to um, to summarize. What would be your three main tips when it comes to starting with the content creation? Number one, know who you're talking to. If you know who you're talking to and you know what their challenges, problems, aspirations are, you can make content all day long. The second thing is be structured. Don't just come and be spontaneous. Think about the content. Think you think of you know how will this be of value to the person watching it. You know you're always selling. If you are going to ask someone to give up their time to watch your content or read your content, make sure it's of value and there's something in it for them. And then finally, um, test. 
test different types of content on different platforms to find the content that resonates most with your audience. And again, if you know your audience, you'll know where they're hanging out and that makes everything an awful lot easier. 100%. And uh, Sam was talking about overthinking. Overthinking makes it boring. Yes. Uh, give me a thumbs up who've been overthinking during coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I I yet to meet one person who didn't do any overthinking in the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's a, if it's a, it's a really common common trend at the moment, guys. So even if you've been overthinking for the last six months because uh, life been interesting, don't overcomplicate your content. You don't need to put your all overthinking into your content. Simplify. It will make it easier for your audience to consume the content as well. And uh, think about also the what you watching at the moment, what you enjoying watching, what kind of content you are consuming. And uh, that all is help us to trying, you know, trying to see the uh, things from the different perspective. Have a think, do you actually uh, watching any videos that longer than five minutes? Why would you watch the video that longer why five minutes? What makes you watch the video that's longer than five minutes? Like, why did you read this blog? Why did you read this podcast? Think about this, um, think about this things from your perspective that will help you to come up with ideas than you creating content for your audience. True. <laughs> and um, also, a uh, quick review of what's coming next. Next week, uh, really exciting because next week I will be interviewing myself uh, and I will be Jana Martins interviewing Jana Martins. Don't miss this one, okay? I'm, I'm going <laughs> to put all my acting skills together for that one. So, and uh, Jana Martins will be talking about how to effectively use video on LinkedIn. So that's next Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. And then uh, the week after, we're going to talk about how to grow your small business on social media in 2020 with Steve. The week after, uh, we're going to talk about props and cons of filming marketing videos yourself. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, it with another uh, filmmaker, Daniel Kaleja. So that will be interesting discussion. Maybe we will have a fight with him as well, because I will be telling, yes, you can film it on your phone. And he'll be like, no, you need <laughs> You need the camera. So that's on the 21st of October. And uh, on the 28th of October, we're going to talk about the uh, post on LinkedIn to, uh, uh, to attract your ideal clients. So, guys, make sure you uh, keep joining me at 5.30 every uh, Wednesday night. And uh, we have one more comment. Um. I like what you said about put it out there, but don't expect uh, likes, people are still listening. Keep putting content out there, 100%. 100%, and I think we did touch up on it a few times that it's building, it's about building trust and consistency build the trust. If you keep rocking up, you will be perceived, perceived as reliable. And people wanna make business with reliable people. So keep rocking up. And last words from Dan. Yeah, just just keep keep showing up and and just do more. Do more. As in, more action, <laughs> less thinking. So the the thing of the day: stop overthinking, guys, and uh, stop overthinking. And I'll see you next Wednesday at five thirty p.m. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Bye-bye. See you.